Hello, everybody, and welcome back to day two of FinTech Week London. I'm Tyler from the FinTech Times, and today I'm very glad to be joined by Julia Streets of Streets Consulting. Julia, how are you? Morning, I'm really well, thank you. Yes. Really, really well. Day two, very excited. Very, very excited. Early start. Um, but yeah, let's see what day two has in, has in store for us. I think, I think day one went really, really well. Um, and yeah, I think everybody enjoyed themselves quite a lot. So well, it struck me it was ram packed with content. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. wonderful to have everybody here. So yeah. I've been like yeah. caught up with so many people that I haven't seen you know, yeah. such a long time. But yeah. also, I don't know whether you saw we did the uh, fintech talk up shutdown, oh, yes. where I brought in a couple of comedians yesterday yes. just to kind of shine a light on the fact that actually we use all this jargon in the industry, but yeah. does everybody else understand uh, what that actually means? That's a good point. But we did it in Ada Street Child, which is the benefiting charity for, oh. uh, and I'm very proud to serve as a trustee. So uh, it's been a phenomenally important conference for many, many reasons. Yeah, I, I heard a lot of good feedback about that, uh, that comedy session. So yeah, well, well done. It was that. fun. It was it, fun. It was good. It was it good. Was. It's fun to be fun, <laughs> isn't it? Um, but Julie, before we, before we get, uh, go ahead with any of our questions, why don't you tell our audience just a bit mm -hmm. about who you are, where you've come from and what your company's about? Sure, happily. Uh, so my name's Julia Streets. I'm the founder and the CEO of a business development, marketing and communications consultancy called Streets Consulting. And we're all about helping fintech firms to grow by driving really strong growth campaigns. Uh, about 50% of our work is UK, 50% non-UK. But in addition to that, I'm also very passionate about the talent conversation. And I have a podcast called Diverse City Podcast, which is all about diversity and inclusion in the field of financial services. That's fantastic. Thank you for that intro. A really, really good intro. Um, so, so you mentioned uh, with Streets Consulting, you're, you're helping uh, businesses basically expand and grow with, mm -hmm. with campaigns. Um, when I was when I was doing a little bit of research, just just prepping for this interview, I noticed that you you work with quite a wide ar array of, of businesses. Do you notice, in terms of their size between small and large businesses, mm -hmm. do you notice? major differences in their campaigns that you like? Yeah, I mean, significantly, the, the biggest difference tends to be resource. So, you know, when you're starting out with a very, very small company, so that's either seed or kind of pre-series A, series A uh, and beyond, mm -hmm. uh, of course, resources are very tight. Mm -hmm. And then when you work with some of the largest financial institutions in the world, and we literally have done sort of I, uh, start up to IPO, we've done all the different series uh, fundraising rounds mm -hmm. and also international expansion and mergers and acquisitions is interesting as well. Mm -hmm. So of course, resource is the biggest difference. Mm -hmm. But actually what we say to everybody is it doesn't really matter because where you are is about positioning yourself for your next milestone. Mm. So position yourself as the organization you seek to become, not necessarily the organization you are today. Mm. So you reflect some ambition and vision for the future, but also create campaigns that are really focused on impact. Mm. So if you're really small, it doesn't matter. And if you're huge, it makes no difference at all. It's all about impact. So the measurement of your campaign, the success of your cam campaign really matters. Mm. Uh, so it's a some, some extent actually size does not matter no it's all about focus yeah it's it's all very it's all very bespoke and on a case by case basis and i think that's something that when i was doing the research it was really emphasized by your consultancy um in terms of in terms of collaboration mm -hmm. in in the industry i mean it's 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 a big thing at the moment at working together you yeah. know it's it's better to work together than to work alone as they say um and we we spoke a lot about uh, different sectors sort of cross collaborating with the fintech industry mm -hmm. but in terms of and this is a double barrel question for you Julia is in terms of these companies getting forward and, and getting better do you think that they should be working together and if so how can they do that well, you're, you're right. I mean, everybody's talking about the importance of collaboration, and particularly when we think about embedded finance and uh, the opening up of the APIs, open banking, and how all of that is going to work together. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a very exciting time, actually. So I've been in the industry, I hate to say it, but probably coming up for about 30 years now. And thank you for your surprise at that <laughs> response, which is really appreciated. Um, but what's interesting is when I, when I started this industry, it was all very closed, very proprietary. People were like, this is our technology, our technology stacks. We will not open up. And forget open source, I mean, just, just no chance. Mm -hmm. Of course, now everybody understands we have to collaborate. And the key thing there is about, uh, I think there are two things that come up for me. One of them is, um, what are we all trying to achieve? 
and uh, what is the focus? And do we have aligned focus, aligned purpose, aligned values around what we're trying to achieve? Mm. And the second piece, which is arguably even more important, is what does the customer or the client need? Mm. And therefore, as we are designing our models of collaboration, are they ultimately achieving those two things? The first is about how do we work together, and the second is much more about who we're serving. Mm. And, and having those things clearly in mind as we go through any collaboration is really important. I'm also a big believer in the model of abundance. You know, it is all about the power of abundance. So we do a lot uh, in, for the industry and in the industry uh, so that we can uh, get, uh, not only because we have, we have things to offer in terms around coaching and mentoring and supporting, but also in terms of supporting us in our learning. You know, we really keen, we've got some amazing domain experts in our industry, but it's important that we stay at the very edge of what's new. Yeah. So uh, it's a two way thing. There has to be mutuality in the, uh, in the collaboration, which, which flows ultimately both ways. Mm. And you, you do see that, that those visions are becoming increasingly aligned across the board of the companies that you're working with, despite their size. I think so. Those that are successful and proving to be successful, I mean, I think the, the purpose is very interesting. So if you think particularly about the recruitment of talent mm. and the ability to recruit and retain talent, the question of purpose comes up over and over and over again. Mm. Uh, also, when in, you're looking for investment, you know, investors really want to understand what is your purpose? What is your vision? Yeah. Are you going to be here in two years time? You know, we could, I could quote all the data in the world about startups that don't make it. In 15 years of being in business, we've had clients that have not made it. So it's important to understand the pitfalls as much as it is the opportunities. Mm -hmm. So everybody wants to appreciate and understand why, you're, why you believe you're going to be successful mm -hmm. as a fintech company, but also what is the role that you play for your customers, for the industry, and also for your collaborators as well. Mm -hmm. You've really brought to home this idea of having a, a really strong identity and how, how important that is yeah. as a business. And, and having, having an ambition and sort of sticking to it, I think, is, is, is really important. And that's something that you've, you've emphasized really well there. In terms of going back, maybe just moving away from some of the larger mm -hmm. companies that you, you work with, and you, you have worked with quite a few not notable names, but in terms of fintech startups, mm -hmm. From your perspective, I mean, you, you have such experience, you know, it, across th three decades of experience mm -hmm. in, in making companies successful. If I was a startup fintech right now, what should I be focusing on? Well, I think number one is um, be laser-like in understanding your sales cycle. Mm. So when you think about the customers and the prospects you're going to be serving or trying to appeal to, mm. is uh, understand the buyer, the decision maker, the influencer, user, the road blocker, and really understand what keeps them awake at night. So we talk a lot in the industry about what is the problem you're solving for. Mm. We say take it to one level lower. Go into the personas, but actually really go into the dynamics of the people you're selling to. Because when you understand what keeps them awake at night, mm. and then you can align your messaging, because we're not all leading providers of next generation paradigm shifting technology solutions. <laughs> because it means nothing. Yeah. Actually, what we have to be doing is aligning our messaging so that it's really resonant and relevant mm -hmm. to the challenges that are keeping your clients and prospects awake at night. Mm -hmm. But also, nobody makes a decision in isolation. So whether you are, um, if, for example, you're selling to a bank, you could be selling to the C-suite in a particular business line who are then passing it on to their tech, to their ops, uh, as well as legal and compliance, procurements, you know, all of these are very, it I use them deliberately because they're very distinct roles, but they have to come together to successfully get you through the sales cycle. Mm -hmm. But also know who your sponsor is. And the fascinating thing about when you're selling to a bank or a large financial institution that is reporting quarterly, mm -hmm. is that can change. So you need to be really, really focused on who you're selling to, who else is involved in the sales cycle and what keeps her awake at night so that you can help them overcome those challenges. The next thing then is about how you collaborate with in order to get into the organization. So you have to get on preferred supplier lists. Uh, so you need to have the very best security and compliance requirements. Mm -hmm. Uh, but also there will be other suppliers you can work with who can help bring you in. And that's where the ecosystem collaboration can be really powerful. Mm -hmm. And in terms of sourcing talent, I mean, you, you mentioned a lot about in, in the fintech, well, in the fintech industry, but all, all across a lot of industries right now, there's a real shortage of, of good talent and, and being able to retain talent. Mm -hmm. how, can, how can these fintech startups approach that problem? 
Think about your culture from day one. From day one, even if it's just three founders sitting together having kind of created a business, is really think about the culture of your organization as you grow. Thinking about that five years later is too late. Because actually, if you have a very clear sense of who you are, who you want to be, mm -hmm. uh, that will then attract the talents. But also listen to your teams as you grow, listen to your staff, because they will tell you what the lived reality of being in your organization truly is. Mm -hmm. That will help you f f form and firm up your identity. Actually, you mentioned it, the, the whole point about uh, your brand identity and your cultural identity. And then that will help you attract and retain talents because actually, ultimately, it will shine from your organization. Mm -hmm. If people don't want to do business with people they like, people want to work in organizations where they feel like they belong. So think about it from day one. It's incredibly important. Yes, and I think it's, I think it's one of those things, as, as you said, it's going gonna, it's gonna to only become more and more important as, as the industry develops. Uh, we haven't even touched on, you know, we, th we think about uh, tech talent in the industry. So you think about you know the lack of um, you know programmers and and uh, developers that we have. Let's talk about the metaverse. Now, <laughs> your face when I said the word metaverse. But actually, if you look at the talent that's going now, that is a very exciting place to to do business, to learn, to code, to be involved in. If as an industry we in the financial services industry do not appeal to that talent, we're going to lose the very best of the talent. Um, we've had a, I, I think it's a second wave. We've kind of, we've been competing to try to keep talent that has naturally appeals to some of the tech giants mm. uh, or have been lured by the tech giants. Um, if, we've, if we've convinced them to stay in the industry now, we need to think about actually how do we make their lives really interesting. And that's of course where certain tech um, collaborators can come in. Mm. So that a lot of the mundane operations and how we create uh, tech platforms and offerings. Mm -hmm. I think particularly of low code and no code. Mm -hmm. I think particularly of um, platform plays. Is that actually what it means is you can free up a lot of the capacity that you have within your client's organization so that then their team can be a lot more creative. And it's really important that we get that, that alignment right. Otherwise, we're at risk of actually another wave of people leaving lured by the metaverse because it's a lot more exciting, mm. they would say. It's, a, it's, it's like a competition almost in, in trying to, to find talent. And just moving on from when, when you opened, you mentioned that you'd worked with a lot of, of well, you were familiar with companies uh, that hadn't worked and, and why they hadn't worked. But from your perspective, what, is, what are the major, most common pitfalls when, when scaling? Why do people fail when they try to scale? Well, one of the biggest pieces of advice I, or, or kind of conversations I have with early stage companies when we very, very first meet them is we ask them this question, uh, which is how many leads would it take to break your reputation? Because it's this interesting challenge of positioning yourself to be the organization you seek to become, but not overstretching yourself so you're over promising and under delivering. Mm. So if you put out a load of marketing that tells people how amazing you are, but you don't have the products and the proposition to fulfill it, mm. or indeed the team to be able to convert it, you're gonna be in trouble very early. And uh, reputation is everything. Mm. Brand, identity, reputation. Mm. So one of the things that we've seen some organizations uh, struggle with is when they've overextended themselves too quickly. Um, and then the other is, uh, sometimes it's around the regulatory status. Okay. So we've had, we worked with some crypto companies very early on that was, they were just arguably too early to market. Mm -hmm. So market fit is really important. Mm -hmm. So really understanding the market fit. We see a lot of fintechs come through and actually tech in, in other areas come through going, I've got an amazing idea. And they go, well, where does it fit with the market? And that came out, it was Kate Bond actually uh, from Macquarie Bank who said that yesterday on the platform uh, in the opening uh, panel. Mm. It's got to have a really strong market fit. Mm. You're, going to, you're going to know where you're standing, really. And, know, and it goes back to what you were saying before, just know who you're serving. Right. And know what you're, you're existing for, isn't it? Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, in terms of, I mean, I, I already know the answer to this next question. Oh, do you? Okay, I do think, I? I think, it would, I think <laughs> it would be good for, us, for our viewers to know, Streets Consulting, how is it different? How is it a mark above the rest of the other consultants? So we, we believe that PR for PR's sake is a waste of money. We believe that marketing for marketing's sake is a waste of money. What we do is we create a really integrated business development marketing comms campaigns mm -hmm. that are designed on helping businesses to grow. So really understanding where you fit in the market, mm -hmm. uh, who do you compete with, how do you differentiate? 
what's your messaging that's really resonant and relevant to everything I've talked about? Mm -hmm. And then how do you get that message to market in a, in a laser-like, really well-planned way that minimizes campaign wastage? and is measured, we measured the hell out of everything, <laughs> quantitatively and qualitatively, that impact, mm -hmm. right? What impact is it having? And then actually creating campaigns that have a degree of agility, so you can take advantage of opportunities that are coming up, but also you have a very strong sense of what your journey is going to be. Mm -hmm. um, that, I think that's what makes us different. And, and honestly, in 15 years, we've never looked for a client. All our work has come from word of mouth and reputation. And so I wake up every single day being immensely proud of the team. We have amazing domain experts mm -hmm. in crypto, capital markets, payments, the world of fintech in its broader sense, mm -hmm. also technology experts. Um, and we create really strong campaigns that are all about growth. Well, that sort of that last comment that you made really encompasses the, the theme of this entire interview is about brand image and, and knowing yourself and your business. And uh, it, it, it's, it's fascinating, it really is. But thank you, Julia Streets. That's been a fantastic Pleasure. conversation. Thank you. And I hope you enjoy the rest of day two of FinTech Week London. Likewise. Thanks thank very, you much. very much.